Well, Trevor, I would say instead of blaming sanctions for the economic problems in Zimbabwe, I would love to see the Zimbabwean government take responsibility for all the economic problems in the country, for the real suffering that we're seeing amongst ordinary people here. Because it is impossible to me that these targeted measures, these measures which mean you can't open a bank account and keep money there and you can't travel to the UK on four individuals, it's beyond credibility to say that those could be affecting the wider economy and wider Zimbabweans. So I would love to see people taking responsibility and recognizing that if you run the economy in this way where you don't even have a market exchange rate for, for your money, if you allow the billions that we know are lost in corruption from Zimbabwe to continue, then it's going to be very hard to take the country forward. And those who are involved in corrupt and illicit activities, they can't blame sanctions. Mm. Those, are, those are their choices. To, to, to take gold out of the country in the way that they do, to deal in fuel or money in the way that they do. And hiding behind um, targeted measures of travel bans and asset freezes on four individuals um, is beyond belief. And I do think that there is an increasing understanding and awareness amongst Zimbabwean people that it's economic mismanagement and corruption that are causing the problems in Zimbabwe. So the, the, the sanctions will most likely bite on the two individuals. The UK would have sent a message, but are sanctions effective in the long term in terms of what you're trying to do? Well, I do believe that sanctions send a clear message, a clear message that you cannot commit human rights violations, human rights violations that have been underlined by independent commissions and have no accountability. I think that, you know, all countries of the world, we've signed up to certain standards under the UN. Zimbabwe itself in its own constitution has got a quite amazing bill of rights. And I think that it's right that that line is drawn and that people know that that impunity will not be there. So in that sense, I think it really does have an impact and that people will pause and think and it sends a signal. But I also hope it sends a signal that if you can get onto a pathway, a better pathway of upholding human rights and implementing those reforms, then those sanctions could be removed into the future and to encourage that pathway to go forward.